I mean, I feel like you're going to give me your help either way, so just go ahead. True, but still, it, it would have been nice to have consent. Yes, yes. Yes! Okay, first off, we're in a dystopian world. That's what it looks like to me. And I'm going to help glamorize you. Because did you see what Sue was doing? She totally wore that armor, though she totally fell. Yeah, we're not going to do that. We're going to glamorize that armor. We're going to pull your hair up and just give you a... T- it, out, of, out of character, Frankie, is there is there makeup or cosmetics in this world I could use? Um, I would say there is, but it's more like make it, um, like war paint. They (laughs) kind of, right? Like the women do. (laughs) Right, right. It's more like they make it themselves type of a thing. Okay. And it's not necessarily like super flashy makeup. It's more, right. It's more to like camouflage stuff, but you can certainly turn it into flashy makeup. Okay, he said, well, now I, I he'll say, well, I'm pretty sure we can find some makeup. We'll ask Frankie for help. And we're going to glamorize you. We're going to give you a uh, militarized, glamorized look. And trust me, when you follow these moves, you will secure this boy's heart. And he's going to grab her by the hand and say, girl, come with me. He'll say, oh, Frankie, your help is required, my friend. Come, come. I, I- Okay, I, I I know I consented to this, but you didn't say anything about makeup. <laughs> it's too late. I don't, I don't wear makeup. <laughs> oh, don't worry. You'll look amazing. You have amazing bone structure. And he's like pointing at her cheeks. He said, these cheekbones are legendary. <laughs> He'll grab her hand again and smash her. <laughs> Very reluctantly follows you. She's trying to find an exit route. <laughs> And then uh, when Frankie showed up, he'll say, Frankie, I need mm-hmm. some things. Like what? What do you need? I need makeup. I need armor. And I need something that can make her, um, he, and he'll look at Tori's body, something that could mm-hmm. accentuate her curves without saying, come and get it, dinner is served. <laughs> oh, this is because of Felix. Yes. And stars oh, like glowing with excitement. Oh, wait. And he will like actually, um, cause he does carry some camouflage stuff with him and he'll pull out like a, a little pack that has like different like SWAT, you know, different paints on it. Um, and, and interesting enough, a lot of them are probably like darker shades of greens and blues and grays, which I don't know if that's what the Tori likes. <laughs> <laughs> she's just shaking her, she's looking at you, giving you this look like, don't you dare help him. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. Star's gonna help you. Star, Star knows what to do. Okay. So, one of Star's traits is fashion sense. And I have a six in that. Okay. <laughs> gonna roll for that. Yes, I am. So... So you're gonna go ahead and there's probably gonna be like a 80s montage, honestly. 80s montage is your 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 glamming glamming her up. And so um it could it could probably be like one of those things where sometimes you have to fight her a little bit. It's like, yeah, get out, you like, you know, just, just resisting a, a little bit. Frankie's the assistant. And she like shakes her head <laughs> and goes back. While this is all happening. I'm gonna say that um, Felix actually goes up to both Black Powder and Sam. And he's gonna say, hey guys, could I talk to you both privately? Yeah, sure. It's about your two friends, um, Sue and Tori. How long have you known those two? What are, what are they like? I think I've actually only known them for what, two days? <laughs> really? Right. Hmm. He looks towards uh, Sam. Ooh, wow, was her wowzer. I'm gonna say uh, we're pretty good <clears throat> friends. We've traveled, right, Black Powder. We've traveled together quite a bit. Right, but still only about two or three days since we met. <laughs> <laughs> well, even though you've known them for two days, what's their story? What are they like? I'm just curious. Uh, Sam, do you want to say it? Or should I? Well, they're kids. They're young. 
He looks at you oddly when you say that. They're kids. I mean, they're both seem to be just as old as the rest of us. Right. Right, yeah. <clears throat> you see, the thing is... Um, uh, well, Black Powder, go ahead, tell him, tell him. <laughs> All right, I am going to be honest. So, Sue, so I've known less time than Tori. Sue seems very friendly, always willing to help. Not the best cook, but she tries her best. She's uh, a horrible cook, but she wants to be better. <laughs> uh, she, really? I mean, the chili looked good. I just didn't have a chance to try it. She got help. Uh... <laughs> We know very well that she got help. Uh, she, she's determined. She's very set on her course, and she's not going to let anything get in her way, which to some may call it a virtue. Tori is a bit creepy. A bit naive. <laughs> but I also think she is a good person and also very determined. She's certainly unique and, uh, well, keeps you guessing. I'd say they're both fine, and they both... Are crushing on you. Yeah. Very hard. Really? I, yeah, I have a bet with Star whether or not they're going to get into a fight over it. It's that bad. <laughs> wow. He sort of, he like kind of blushes a little bit and he kind of rubs the back of his neck. That's really flattering. Wow. Did they tell you this? No, it was just obvious. <laughs> wow. I don't know if. I have to be honest, I don't even know what to do in this type of situation. I've never actually was aware of anyone being interested in me in like that. It's, I'm afraid that, you know, we've had a lot going on since everything's been going on with the government. I haven't really had much time to think about those kind of things. Yeah, you got plenty of time to think about those kind of things later. Much later. When you're older. <laughs> much <laughs> Uh, okay. He looks at the two of you really weird when you say that. I love that. Yeah, when you're older. Well, to be fair, older. I don't know necessarily about that. They're in a stressful situation. They could die any day now, so if you like one of them, go for it. I will warn you, if you hurt Tori, I will break your kneecaps. And if you hurt Sue, you'll have to have kneecaps broken, too. <laughs> wow, okay, hey, I'm just learning about all this, okay? So, let's just... No, just letting you know now that they have people who care about them and don't want to see them get hurt. So if both of them like me, doesn't that mean one of them eventually will probably get hurt inevitably? Yeah. So does that mean that my kneecaps will get hurt regardless? Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. There's a difference between being let down by the person not reciprocating your feelings and then saying, hey, you know what? Somebody using them for carnal desires and then throwing them away. Garbage. Understood, he says. Yeah. All right. Thanks, I guess, for this talk, he says, Felix says, looking like he wasn't sure if maybe it, he is actually, like, glad he had this conversation. Well, that's truthful. It's sometimes challenging. <laughs> yeah, it is. Having to be truthful. What a disadvantage. Mm. Meanwhile, back in the tent, Describe for us what Tori now looks like. Okay, so, because Star, because she fought with Star, let's just be real about it, she fought with Star about this. And I have a look that I think would fit Tori perfectly. So Star was like, okay girl, let me be real with you. You made this extremely difficult, but like I said, you have amazing bone structure. I was able to work some magic with this, and he like, camouflage. And so, Here's what I have to say to you. Ta-da, this is Tori in Discord. So, <laughs> he glamorizes the armor because she seems to really be into black. Oh, wow. wow. So he uses some of the camouflage to kind of paint and he like puts some of it in her hair and he does makeup and he says, he'll stand next to Frankie and help his hands on his hips and said, it wasn't easy, but I think mission accomplished. <laughs> I, g I give you a high five. Yeah, man. <laughs> so... Tori basically looks like goth Black Widow <laughs> from Marvel. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I was thinking that too. I was like, oh, she's going to turn into Black Widow, baby. <laughs> it's very tight. Very tight. 
Um, yeah, and I'll let Tori re decide how she reacts to this look. Yeah, she's the problem like... is you can't see your reflection. That's a problem. Oh, oh yeah, she has to look at herself. So she kind of <laughs> looks at the outfit. It's very like tight and like constricting, and she's not used to wearing such form-fitting clothes. So she's she feels a little uncomfortable, but. Um, so look at Star and be like, yeah, thank you for keeping my black aesthetic that is very important to my image. <laughs> I can't let people see me in something else. So this, this, is, this is okay. Star thank will be you. like, you're welcome. He'll say, now let's do a little turn on the catwalk. Come on, show us, show us. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> He'll walk next to you. He'll say, look, take me by the arm and I'll show you how to walk in this outfit. <sighs> okay. And she'll go with him. <laughs> <laughs> so Star will be basically showing you how to move comfortably in the outfit. It'll make the little... <laughs> <laughs> She's like walking in it. Is she like, wearing like heels or like what kind of shoes? Like wedges. Yeah. That's kind of what She's I not thought. used to wearing wedges, so she definitely is stumbling as you take her across the catwalk. Oh my gosh. So after he'll be like, he said, once you get your balance, you'll be okay. He'll say, okay, look, I'll show you. He'll look around for like some boots and he'll put on the wedges himself. And he'll say, this is how you do it, girlfriend. And he'll like totally do like a Naomi Camel style, like catwalk, hip swinging, hands on his hips. He'll flip his hair. He said, this is how you let them know steak is for dinner without saying steak is for dinner. <laughs> he said, now you try. Yeah, she'll she'll try to emulate it, but it looks very awkward and stiff. <laughs> like she does not know how to sway her hips like uh, Star does. I will say that while while Star is showing you this and showing you how to walk and stuff, you can't help but feel like Star's whole thing reminds you of Carmen because this is a very much a Carmen thing. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So after the catwalk, she'll go up to Star and say, you know, this this actually, this makeover, while not my favorite, it, it was actually kind of nice. It reminded me of what me and my sister would do together sometimes. Really? Mm -hmm. She is very, oh, you would love Carmen. She, you and her would play so well. Like same personality, very glamorous, beautiful girl. <sighs> Oh, that sounds wonderful. I would love to meet your sister one day. So she'll kind of look sad at that. Like, I, I don't know where she is. What do you mean? She disappeared. In my world, she, she disappeared. Um, we were, you know, we were in a mansion one day, a haunted mansion, and... I did something bad and she went away. You kind of, the whole room starts to feel really chilly all of a sudden and you just has this sudden, ooh, yeah. kind of feeling when she says this story. Okay. Well, hear me and he'll, he'll touch your hand and he'll give you like an intense look in your eye and say, with everything in us, we'll help you find your sister. Thank you, Star. And she'll like grab his hand and squeeze it tight. The power of friendship. Oh, friendship. Frank, Frankie will come in and give them all a big hug and just kind of. Like, <laughs> yes, yes. Her costume squeaks as you. <laughs> when you finish, when you come out of the the hug, you're going to hear somebody clear their throat <clears throat> at the at right just outside of the tent at the doorway of the tent. Uh, it's Henry. I was going to say, do I recognize that? <clears throat> I've heard it many times. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely Henry. Yes. Without even turning. Mm -hmm. I, and, and I'll say that, um, that's, that's Henry. Um, I'll walk out. Um, what is it? He's very business like and straight to the point, but he looks right at, right into your eyes and he says, 
we have a lead on Victor. We do. We don't know exactly where he is, but we have an idea of how to find out where he is. Good, 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 good. Um, so what are the next plans? I was talking with Felix and Agatha. She's awake now, by the way. Oh, good. She told me that we should loop you in on what the plan is. It's not going to be easy, though. Felix put in a good word about your group also, and I guess if they want to be in the briefing room too, it's fine by me. Uh, yes, I, I, I trust them, and we could use their help. All right. Meet us in the briefing room at 1400 hours. Okay, we'll do. Um, I'll come back in and tell Tori and, and my and uh, Star um, where, where to meet um, to discuss the next plan um, to save Victor. If you are all still willing, you can join us. Absolutely. Okay. I'll then go find uh, Sam and Black Powder as well to let them know. Yeah, lead the way. We'll we'll help where we can. Okay. Oh, look at Tori. Star will be like, and then she gorgeous. <laughs> Crosses her arms. <laughs> My train sensibilities are being very strained right now. <laughs> Tori, how are you, Tori? Uh, I feel different. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> I, this is not my normal attire, but I'm just going to work it, as Star would say. Yes. Yeah, work it. This Sue is going to look you up and down, and she's going to say, Wow, Tori, that's a really fitting outfit, she says. Thank you. I, I like your bulky outfit, too. She She looks up and says, it's okay. I don't know if I can move as well in it as you can with yours. Yeah, I. You know, it is. It is a pretty nice outfit. <laughs> <sighs> I'm gonna look at Star and Frankie. Did you two have something to do with this? Star is nodding <laughs> enthusiastically. <laughs> so fourteen hundred hours rolls around, and you guys are gonna go into a relatively large tent which is sort of like the like war room, room i guess yeah. it's like a war room type of thing and you know there's a really cool looking table that has like holographic very futuristic holographic looking things so it could basically show terrain and like maps of the floor plan of the of a, a building of sorts so things like that and you're gonna see that uh both henry and felix plus Agatha is there and Agatha is is sitting at a chair in front of the computer and I wouldn't say she has like a bandage around her head but she does have something like on her temple like where the bullet entered that's semi-transparent but you can still see something's there almost like a gel-like it's like a gel-like thing um so like meta gel I guess if for those of you who play Mass Effect um that's on her head um and uh I'm going to say that when you all enter the room, Felix notices Tori, and he's like, Wow, Tori, that's a nice-looking armor you have there. Really? You think so? <laughs> yeah. He says, I hope it's comfortable. Yeah, it's very comfortable. <laughs> Even though she looks really like uncomfortable, like noticeably uncomfortable. <laughs> oh. Frankie, Agatha says, I heard that I owe you my life, essentially. Well, you know, it was also my friend Star who stabilized you as well, so. Um... You're the psychic healer, Agatha says, turning to Star. Uh, yes? 
I healed you. I don't know if I'm psychic, but it's good to see you back on your feet. And he'll walk toward her with his hand extended. So it's a pleasure to meet you. You as well, she says as she shakes her hand. Thank you again for all of your help. She looks at the group. My name is Agatha. I'm Felix's sister. I heard that all of you have joined the resistance. We definitely could use all the help we can get. This, by the way, is Henry. He's one of the people who helped find out this information that we're about to tell you. I don't know how much Frankie has briefed you, but we're essentially trying to find one of our major scientists. Victor is his name. Why don't you go over what we know, Henry? Henry, at this, this entire time, he was kind of leaning against the wall a little bit. And then he walks over um, and he says, sure, Agatha, if you could please. So she's going to start, you know, typing onto the computer and is going, you'll start to see the, the, the uh, table hologram starts to flash and it just starts to show and illustrate some of the things that he's talking about. And he says, so we have a lead that the whereabouts of Victor can be found in one of the supercomputers of the government. Now, as you can imagine, there's heavy security around these computers. It's not something that we can just hack into remotely. We have to actually physically hack into them because of the high security. Supercomputers are located all around the world, but we tracked one down that we think might be the easiest of the computers available. It's not going to be easy, it just happens to be one of the easiest. If you could please, Agatha. And then what she's going to show is she's going to show in front of you what looks like a giant slot machine looking thing, but it's a giant floating slot machine. There's a secret base that is located in a floating casino in Las Vegas. It's called the High Roller. And yes, it looks like a giant slot machine. Every hour, the giant handle pulls down and the big slot starts to light up. Sometimes they get matching sets and when that happens, it showers down golden confetti below everyone in the city. And Felix mentioned, sort of says on the side, some people and officially nicknamed the casino the Mile High Club. And then with this, uh, Agatha says, I don't think that's really important in this mission. <laughs> Felix just kind of shrugs and then he leans back again. So here's the situation, uh, Henry says. We first need to get ourselves into the casino, specifically into the VIP section of the casino. Only very important people, normally wealthy people, and their guests have access to the VIP. There are cameras everywhere keeping an eye on everything. And there are also guards keeping an eye on suspicious activity, especially around the casino tables, as you can imagine. Once we get inside the VIP section, we want to make it backstage into the grand stage, because backstage of the grand stage, there's a janitor's closet with a hidden panel that activates a hidden elevator. We either need to hack the elevator or get the password from an employee. Once we reach the base, there's gonna be even higher security, more cameras, and more guards. But we need to get to the mainframe and physically hack into the computer, get the information that we need, hopefully for Victor's whereabouts, and get out without alarming anyone. This is going to be a pretty tough heist situation. Yeah, we got a heist, everybody, out of character. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I do too. Yes. This is genius. Thank you for the briefing, Agatha says. So, we leave the floor open for ideas. You are all free to discuss amongst yourselves in character how you want to do this, how you want to pull this heist. Henry is basically going to be saying we should be able to provide you with most of the weapons and equipment that you'll need but as i said we want to try to keep things as low-key as possible the goal is to not to be caught and not to raise the alarm 
obviously the most important thing is to get the information from Victor. So in a pinch, if we have to, if we have to raise the alarm, we just have to make sure that one of us at least makes it out alive with the information. Mm. Well, let's look at this one step at a time. The first step would either be to get into the VIP area or to see if we can get that password from staff, right? That's right, Henry says. Well, getting backstage will be a little bit of a challenge, too, after we get the VIP. Do we have a way to get the VIP passes? We should be able to make fake VIP passes, but that in and of itself might not be enough. Somehow you need to be able to convince the guards or wherever that you actually are high-positioned people. If you're able to get forgeries, convincing them shouldn't be hard. It's not hard to pretend to be rich. I'm thinking if Star performs, that gives us a reason to be near the stage and having a performer is usually right up with some VIP reasons to be places. Frankie could be a security guard, or we could just be entourage. Uh, Agatha types are on the computer, and then she says, well, there is a performer uh, in that casino who is a performer, a drag queen named Diamond Dozen. Diamond dug it doesn't. And she actually has very similar features to Star. Not completely, but at least from the stage, you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference if Star was able to copy their look. And so they're just gonna show you an image of Diamond Dozen. And it does look like Star in many ways, but like a drag version of Star. Um, so you all can decide how you wanna work that. So wouldn't the difficult part with that one be then to get rid of the real performer? Because you can't have two of them on stage for one second. Or we can do that. Absolutely, we'd have to incapacitate the the real Diamond Dozen, at least temporarily, Henry says. Well, Tori's pretty good at that. <laughs> Star's gonna look at Felix and say, is there a way we can cover these up? so it's not so obvious or make them look like a prop if I'm gonna look like Diamond Dozen. I'm not a wardrobe specialist, so that's not my forte. And he looks around the other two and both Henry and Agatha kind of say, that's not really in our wheelhouse either. No worries. You did some good stuff with Tori. I'm sure you have to figure something out. Thank you, Black Powder. I like you. <clears throat> I think I can work something out. Diamond Dozen? She's about to get winged. And he'll flutter he is. <laughs> do we know any songs that they're performing? Maybe she'll actually do a classic because her name is Diamond Dozen. Maybe she's one of her biggest like closing songs is Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. Yes. So like that's a classic. <sighs> if this is a fancy place where I'll probably gonna need to like clean the wardrobe too. I guess we all need to have a makeover. She looks excitedly at Black Powder and <laughs> Sam. <laughs> I held around in a giant cake yesterday. I'm not for anything at this point. We also have to look a little bit older too, because I think people as young as uh, young looking as us might be a little suspicious. Because this tends to be an older crowd who goes to this casino. I think I can help with that part. Hmm. So, I mean, obviously we have several defenses, if you will, layers that we have to get through, right? So, um, how do we even get into the casino? There's a val there's valet. We can probably acquire, rent a vehicle and drive you up there. Uh, I'll probably be doing the driving Felix says, which means that out on the field, it's pretty much going to be Henry and Agatha. But from there, you pretty much are on your own. Okay. Once we're at the top, at the casino, because you said it's in the sky, can we just walk in? Or do you need to like pay a fee? 
we can acquire tickets at least in, uh, into the general area. And like I said, we can make VIP IDs for you. Um, but again, the security is really high. So hopefully, hopefully the VIP passes will trick the system. Okay. And then we get into the VIP section by pretending to by start pretending to be Diamond Dozen, and we're just the entourage. We could be backup dancers. Can you dance, Sue? I can dance okay. I'm not wonderful, but I would like to think above average. Sue, you're wonderful. Oh, thanks, Sam. She says with a smile. <laughs> Sam. We don't need to like pretend to be backup dancers. We could just uh, bullshit our way in, making them think we're important somehow. He said it's not hard to pretend to be rich. Yeah, we can be the entourage somehow. Friends. I'm a college student. I don't know how to be rich. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I, I'm I'm a kid. I don't know how to be rich either. I'll, I'll, teach you guys, I'll give you guys some hints on how to pretend to be rich. Okay. There you go. We need a password because we have to take the elevator to the base, right? Okay. Because the elevator takes us to the base with the mainframe. Yeah, okay. and then in the mainframe, that's where we get the information. Correct. Cool. Agatha and Henry, who's the better hacker? Henry, probably. Henry's better. He's the better hacker. Because my thought was. We only want a few people actually going backstage. That way, if security comes and checks on the VIP seats, somebody's still sitting there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it would even be probably Henry, and I would actually say, we'll trust him on his own. I want to say Tori, but we might need her to keep Diamond kind of Dozen incapacitated. Yeah, I can incapacitate her. her. Henry and Sam actually like find, uh, go in, whereas Black Powder, Frankie, and Agatha can stay in the seats. And Sue. And Sue. I can stay in the seat seat as well, Sue says. Because I don't think technology-wise, Black Powder is useless. So, works for yeah, her interaction. But I would trust Sam to keep an eye on Henry. Yeah. Also, out of character, we're gonna need personas, like fake personas for each of you, and so I will let you can either do this in character or out of character, like decide who you all are, like why are you important people. Random out of character uh, thing, we should come up, uh, make a group chat for us to do outside planning as well. Mm. Sure. So yeah, getting through the casino, and then when we do, getting into VIP as our starting points. Because I think getting into the VIP is still going to be tricky. Right, if we don't, because we don't have the drag queen outside of the VIP, right? <clears throat> so, unless she comes out and we're able to get her outside of the VIP. Or we can, if we can get Tori mm -hmm. into the VIP, or Star, either or. Mm -hmm. And maybe coerce Diamond doesn't to come out? Yeah. Hmm, that's a, that might be smart, Sue says. Sounds like a good plan. If there's nothing else, then we'll prepare and we'll make our way to Vegas in 24 hours. Okay. Good. Cool. So while you guys are all prepping and getting ready, Sam and Black Powder, just because I, I don't know if we've had as, them have as much screen time as everyone else, Sam and Black Powder, you will you will see that um, Felix uh, at some point is actually sitting in front of the fire next to um, next to Sue actually, and Sue yeah. is chatting with Felix, and Felix probably has like a guitar of some sort, and he's just kind of playing the guitar, and he's singing a song, and he's, Felix has an okay voice. It's not amazing, but it's okay. He's able to maintain a tune, and. Right now, uh, Sue seems to be like having a good time and laughing and singing along, and she's getting a little close to Felix. Uh, I don't know if Black Powder and or Sam say or do anything at this point. Whoa. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. I can't. Um, I would definitely say, uh, yeah. Sam would definitely go and kind of be that third wheel to throw a monkey wrench in the system. Okay. And just start talking, I mean, just about the most mundane, boring okay. things to break the mood. Yeah. Why don't you do, uh, would that be IQ? Um, I would say I actually would kind of lean into my streetwise. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, yeah. Nine out of 15. Okay, nice. Yeah, so you're going to come in and you're going to just talk about very boring things and it's kind of bringing the conversation down a little bit and Felix seems, again, trying to be really polite. It's like, oh, oh all right, Sam, but it's like, yeah, this, this conversation's going nowhere. And poor Sue, she like sort of looks a little bit downtrodden. Um, and then she says, uh, well, Sam, it's getting a little late. I think... Um, Maybe it's time that we start turning in before the big mission tomorrow? Yeah, that sounds like a great idea, Sue. That sounds like a great idea. How about you, um, Felix? Uh, and Felix says, yeah, getting some rest would be, would be great. In that moment, I'm going to say that there's a, a cat, um, like a gray cat or something, that's like walking around and you've seen this cat around it seems to be sort of like one of the pets like in the on the base um and the cat's just kind of walking in front of sue and then sue goes oh it's a cat uh, 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 excuse me and it looks like she's about to sneeze and then she like excuses herself and then she runs off oh no oh dear and what I don't know if either of you are going to do anything, but she seems to like for somebody who probably is allergic to cats, the way that she's behaving seems really over the top. Like, like something, something seems to be off by the, with the, with her, like trying to run off from being like about to sneeze from this cat. I'm going to follow Sue. You're going to follow Sue. Is Sam going to follow Sue as well? Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> she, comes into the tent now it's up to you tori if you want to also be in the tent at that moment i don't know if you would be out and about as well or if you're already turning in for the night early it's up to you is felix by himself at the fire well felix is still by the campfire oh by the so... campfire yeah so she'll go hang out with felix all right so you're not going to witness this no. so so um the two of you who go follow sue she goes into the tent and you get to the tent just in time to see Sue. Huh? Huh? Achoo! And then she sneezes. And as soon as she sneezes, to your surprise, something happens unexpectedly. Her face starts to morph like, and change. And it just kind of goes down her body. Her chest gets flatter. Um... Her shoulders get broader, and her entire body, like her her waist, like kind of kind of shapes a little bit less less curvy and more almost pear shaped, kind of. And right before your eyes, she transforms into a boy. She's now a boy. And not just any boy. So she still has the sea green, kelp green hair, but it's now like what I'm going to, what a lot of people in anime call anti gravity hair. Mm -hmm. So it's like not quite like Goku, but it's definitely like sticking up into a very like strange design. And um, and then her her outfit has also transformed slightly. So it's less it's less feminine. It's definitely a lot more masculine. And instead of holding a big giant, uh, a big giant frying pan, she suddenly, in her hands, in its place, has a deck of cards. Like a deck. We're talking like Yu-Gi-Oh cards in her hand. <laughs> and then she looks down at herself, or he looks down at himself, and he says, "Oh, great! Not again!" In a very low voice. 
Oh, well, that was an interesting trick. Oh, oh, oh. And he, <laughs> he, he, he falls back. Uh, how long were you standing there? He says, looking very, very worried as the big sweat drop appears behind him. Oh, long game. enough. Long enough. What's uh, going on? Yes. Um, would you believe that this is a perfectly normal thing from my world? Not by the way you reacted. <laughs> <sighs> okay, all right, he says. So, during that accident that kind of happened where I lost my sense of taste, so in addition to that, part of the curse is that, well, Sometimes, if I run into cats, and I sneeze, I turn into a boy. Uh, how do you turn back? Well, when I turn into a boy, I'm very allergic to dog. So when I sneeze from a dog, then I turn back to a girl. Huh. Oh, Sam. I have a feeling Felix isn't necessarily going to notice me as much, though I could be wrong. I don't know, like, <laughs> apparently guys liking guys is pretty normal around here, so. Yeah, well, unfortunately for him, my taste kind of shifts as well when I'm in this form, so I'm more into girls when I'm like this. Huh. I know, it's weird. I have no idea. Either. Well... I don't really know how to respond to that. <laughs> Do you think everybody else is going to be weirded out by this? Have I mean, you, I'm still the same person. I'm just... Have you gender fluid. Have you seen us? I don't think anyone's going to be weirded out by this, considering the party you've been traveling with. We literally have a fairy, a walking zombie, a girl with magical dolls, and a black and white dude. You keep saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think maybe you could help explain to them? Because I think if it just came from me, they wouldn't necessarily believe me. Uh, yeah, no. Sure. I've got an idea on that, actually. You might want to stay in our tent for the night, though, unless you come across the dog. Why don't you we go and kind of break the news to the rest of the group? Might have to do a little bit of Extra explaining with Henry and Felix and Agatha. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah, so going back um, towards the thing, I'll tell Black Powder to um, stay, you know, a few steps behind with Sue. And I want to gather everybody up around the fire. And sure. Try to bore Felix away again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, Felix, yeah, Felix is going to turn in, so he's going to eventually leave. But, you know, he had a nice small chat, brief chat with Tori. Perfect. So, so now Tori is by herself with Frankie and Star All right. as, you, as you come out. So, um, Star, you did a great job with Tori's makeover. Thank you. And Black Powder and I were trying to kind of help Sue with a little bit of a makeover and ease some tensions and get a little more muscle in preparation for the heist. Mm -hmm. So Black Powder and I have been working with Sue on a great ability to adapt. And so here's what our newest party member is going to help us with. Come on in, Black Powder and Sue. So Black Powder and Sue will emerge. And again, you will see, you can tell by the eyes and the hair, it's definitely the same person. But whoa, like definitely very dude, dudefied up. <laughs> Hi, everyone. He says in a very low voice. He changes his gender when he sneezes. Sue's a dude. Right Just now. for right now. 
Not. We just gotta get him near a dog and they'll turn back into a girl. What? What? A dog? Sneezing, apparently. Allergies. Oh, and by the way, when I'm in this form, I go by Veed. 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 Sue and Sue and Veed. <laughs> Veed. Yes, Sue and Veed. Yes. <laughs> Come on, don't tell me you didn't see that coming. <laughs> Come on. Well, I was hoping his name would be Stu. <laughs> no, it's Stu. No, it's, no, it's Bead. Bead is good. <laughs> Does anybody want to play cards? As he says, as he holds on his cards. <laughs> I'm so sorry if I was really loud. <laughs> So Star's gonna be like, <clears throat> so Veed, he was like, so when you're like this, like, question: How did this happen? It's a very in involved story. Um, I don't really want to talk about it right now, but maybe some other time I will regale you. Interesting. Star will be walking around him, looking him up and down. And he said, so, are we still interested in Felix? Or no? Don't get me wrong, Felix is a good-looking guy. But when I'm like this, my tastes kind of shift a little bit. So, I'm more... I'm more into ladies. Star will lean in closer to it. So, Agatha then. Agatha is actually really cute, now that you mentioned it. And he'll lean back and he'll do behind. He'll lean back and he'll do the Satori. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should keep some. Make sure that he doesn't get into any dogs anytime recently. Yeah. Anytime soon. Yeah. Keep him away from the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep the dogs away. <laughs> so when they're all just kind of hanging out with Zed and trying to figure that out, once things are calmed down a bit, Black Powder will just motion for Frankie to follow him and take him back to the boys' tent. Okay. Is, is everything okay? I just uh, I wanted to check up on you. I mean, you and Victor are a thing, right? Yes, yes. He's he's the love of my life. Are you nervous going into this thing? Of course. I, I don't want us to fail. I, I, I want us to be successful in this. Um, I constantly worry about him and, and how he's doing and what could be happening to him. Um, and he doesn't like, um, he does, he's kind of averting eye contact with you <laughs> this entire time. Um, but he's uh, answering, you know, that's truthful. I wanted to ask, cause it's a stressful situation. What do you used to do to just relax? when you're stressed. To relax? Yeah, just to keep your mind off of the bad stuff that seems to be happening around here. Um, uh, honestly, it's been a while, but I'll, I'll write poems. I'm trying to write poems and sometimes I just write little, you know, stances and that's it. But that helps me relax. Do you have any of your poems around here? I do actually, yeah. And he like pulls out a little like notebook that he has. I, I, I put them here in, in this. Do you ever share those poems? Not normally. Um, but I feel like I can trust you. And he like hands it over to you. They'll kind of hand it back. I, uh, I can't read. Oh. Okay. Um, Let's say we sit down and want you to read me a few poems. Try okay. and figure out things. We can do that. We can do that. Um, and he'll like open it up, and he finds one, um, and he like. He's a little hesitant to read it, um, but he, he does. He does read a little bit. Um, um, a deeper shade of blue. 
and there's nothing I can do. You're so far, far away. I'm a darker shade of me, and I just can't be free. You're so far, far away. It's, it's one that I kind of wrote when we were in Sue's world, thinking about Victor. And then he like closes it, gets a little nervous about it. And, really very personal thank you for sharing it with me you're talented thank you thank you thank you for reaching out to me as well um i'm glad you're here i'm very glad that we met i am too honey. i'll do everything i can to help you get your band back Thank you. And then he like reaches and kind of gives you another like bro pat on the shoulder. <laughs> Keeping like a distance, but still like getting physical contact in. What's, what's wrong, Frankie? N nothing. I you survived by being able to read people, Frankie? There's something bothering you. It's, um, nothing, I, I don't know, I just think, seeing how you've changed, I don't know, it's <laughs> causing me to question myself a little bit. What do you mean? I mean, you're, you're very attractive. <laughs> And I feel guilty about that. <laughs> Why? Because I love Victor very much, and you are, I don't know, messing me up inside. Look, no one can tell you what you feel other than you. But a heart is capable of loving more than one person. And whatever confusion is going on about me right now doesn't change the fact that you love him. You're right. Because I do. I love him very much. You're a very good friend, Black Powder. Very good friend. Thank you. You're a good friend too, Frank. Try not to stress out too much, all right? Uh, I'll try. Yeah, we have to stay focused for our mission, so. It'll be all right. I'll just give him a pat on the head, on the shoulder, and kind of, if he had hair, he'd like ruffle it, but he doesn't, so he'll just kind of do a, the motion. It'll be all right. Okay. And he puts his, like, notebook away, and um, should, we, should we join the others? I think I'm going to pass out for the night. Okay. All right, well, uh, good night, and get the good rest. You too, Frankie. Thank you. And with that, he'll, uh, he'll join the others a little bit, kind of like flustered by that whole thing. So the next day comes along, and you all will get into the horrorcraft looking thing with all of the equipment and outfits and costumes that you need to do your heist. Um, they will, you will travel just outside of Vegas, out in the desert-ish area, um, where the Resistance has managed to acquire a vehicle for you, a very fancy schmancy looking vehicle. It's basically a flying car, um, like almost like a flying stretch limo kind of. And so, uh, Felix is going to be driving and the rest of you all can get in. Um, Agatha, so Henry, he is dressed in a very classic looking high roller like outfit um, with, you know, with like the scarf in the, in the pocket. So he's looking very dapper and um, they've tried to give him a little bit of makeup just to look, make him look a little bit older. Uh, slightly older, maybe more closer to his 30s than to his in his 20s. 
Um, he's got like a goatee kind of looking thing that's very well groomed. Agatha is dressed in a very beautiful sequined gown. So this probably looks a little bit more in the style that Sam is used to. Um, but it's it's but it's um it's a black sequin down so it's it's flashy but it's still like blends into the crowd pretty well and it's a little bit more of a has a more of a futuristic flair to it a little bit um and her hair is tied back very elegantly um which makes her look a little bit more adult and the really cool thing is she's got this single curl the single curl that just cascades down the side of her face. And I'm saying the, this whole time, Veed is looking at her and he's he's going, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> at Agatha. <laughs> um, Felix is dressed like a, a limo driver, basically. Um, what do the rest of you all look like? How, the rest of, how are the rest of you all dressed? I think Frankie is going to be dressed more like security. Yeah, that's that's kind of his um, undercover uh, persona, and probably just go by the name Guy. I mean, Sam would probably just wear a suit. He's very comfortable wearing suits. Sure. So just a decent, like a shark skin yeah. kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gray. Yeah. Argyle socks. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. That's fine. That fashion is still legit, like in these parts. It's it's definitely um, more of a. I think it's not, that fashion is like coming back a little bit. Yeah. If she can, she'll wear pants. <laughs> um, but like fancier pants. <laughs> of course, it'll fancy be fancy pants. Fancy pants. Um, all black ensemble. Like she probably has like a more lady sort of. Jacket, um, blouse. Oh, jacket. Blouse. Okay. Or, yeah, blouse with like a a jacket on top. Um, okay. And her hair is like slip backs, uh, kind of in a like a bun, so she looks a little bit more adult. Um. So if you getting some help from Frankie and the others who know more about the fashion of this place, um, he would be actually wearing a very clean and well fitted suit. Um, it's very sleek, not a whole lot of embellishment other than like a little um, bit of decoration like towards the top and some nice cufflinks. And he'd have his hair slicked back a bit to both make him look a bit older and a bit more fancy, I guess. Um, and doing that thing that some people can do where they, they keep their face more stoic to look older than they are. So Star is gonna have like futuristic Hollywood glasses, like those really big glasses with the like the cap point on their tip. They're gonna be like bespangled. Um, uh, Star is gonna be wearing a wig with the scarf around like those classic like 1950 Hollywood actresses and a long trench coat. And he'll oh, nice. <laughs> He'll have, he'll have a pantsuit on, uh, um, have some uh, nice stilettos on, uh, nails done, and we'll be sitting there and we'll be just living in that moment. He'll feel right. They'll feel right in that moment. Okay. Yeah. It's giving me a lot of like Jackie Brown feel to I it. Like, I I get, I'm with you. When you said pantsuit, I'm like, ooh, that's giving me. Mm. So. As Felix is driving you all into Las Vegas proper, so it's a very awesome looking futuristic version of Vegas. There's like holograms and ads and lights everywhere. Um, think cyberpunk, but like taken to a whole nother level. Um, there's a lot of uh, perf street performers in the streets. Um, it's definitely like a very hedonistic kind of place. Um, and you can see up above in the sky is this floating slot machine looking thing. Um, and just the whole vibe is just, especially for people like Sam and Black Powder, who you, you see familiar elements, but it's definitely like completely Martian to you, even though you're like, this definitely is Earth, but it's like, wow, um, totally up to, a, to another level that you're not used to. And then um, you'll get pulled up to the, you know, to the 
entrance, main entrance of the big giant slot machine. Um, and you guys will go ahead and enter. Um, and the immediate interior, if you go to row 20, looks like that. So, lots of tables, lots of... You can see the security cameras around. Um, and there's just people everywhere. There's like people with drinks. They've got like champagne glasses, and the champagne, the glasses themselves are like very oddly shaped, very futuristically shaped. Um, you've got, you know, the bartenders are dressed really nicely. Everybody here definitely looks stinking rich, filthy rich. They definitely have like noses upturned. Definitely knows that. Each and every one of them are all that in a bag of chips, etc., etc. So, what do you all do? I will take, I will take the lead of whoever's our face. So, who's that gonna be? Is it gonna be Black Powder or is it gonna be Star? Black Powder. Okay. So I'll pretend to be like Black Powder security guard, essentially. Like, and what I would actually do is put my arm through stars so that like we're walking together. Nice. Love it. There will be um, like metal detectors. So did any of you bring weapons or anything that's particularly metallic? No, not <laughs> <laughs> okay. Having known that, I would leave my Tommy gun <laughs> behind. Alright, it'll still be in the limo just in case. Okay. So you guys will, if as long as there's nothing metallic, I'm gonna say for Frankie, like Victor would have wanted you to have been able to get through situations like this. So even though they're, I would say like Frankie's parts are some sort of alloy that would not be picked up by metal detectors. So you guys will be able to go in. The security will like check your tickets at least into the general area of the of the casino, and that will go without a hitch. So, you all will go in, um, and yeah, you are in entrance, and there's people like throwing dice, and there's like blackjack tables, people are at the slot machines, um, food, um, it's just, it's a happening place. Um, what happens? Star will speak up and say, okay, so where is the drag queen so we can swap places? Uh -huh. And where is the stage? So Star kind of understands the layout a little bit better. So to get into the VIP section, um, you're going to see uh, there's going to be like a, two bouncers, very like very well armored bouncers that are standing here, um, and you can see right now it looks like. Uh, some very important looking official, maybe politician, with a, with a young lady, far younger, like half his age probably, um, is go, it's going into the VIP section as he's showing him like his VIP pass. Can you? And you know, the guards let him in. I know Do with, we? With Frankie leading the way and then Black Tower and Star, I think Tori and I will just be behind mm -hmm. following along. Do we see kind of um, access to those rooms? Is it key card? Is it handprint? Is... Yeah, that's a very good question. So if you have a VIP pass, the guards will let them in um, using a handprint. There'll be like a, there'll, there's like a hand that they'll scan against the door and then the doors will slide open and they'll let the people in and then they'll close shut behind them. So it looks like it's handprint uh, signature. Uh, is there a way to bypass it? Do they have you in the uh, in the codex uh, for handprint? Like Star will be saying, like trying to whisper. Yeah, you'll 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 try to whisper that. And um, are you just telling asking that to the group in general? Well, yeah, well, because Star is interlocked arms with uh, Black Powder, and Frankie's in front. So yeah, he'd be like trying to whisper that to Frankie since they saw like. The man put the handprint on there. Yeah. Gakathus will say, Henry should be able to hack that remotely. What do you think, Henry? 
It's tough security, but I think I can bypass it. I'm gonna have to go somewhere relatively close though, um, without too much suspicion, and work what I need to work. We should be able to just get into the DIT on our own though. We shouldn't need to hack hopefully at this stage. Might save that for the other page if we can. Okay. How do we get the drag queen out? Mm. That's the next question, yeah. I know we were talking about sending in Tori and Sue. Mm -hmm. Now with V, do we still stick with Tori going and finding the drag queen? I think so. I think Tori's the best at neutralizing. Yeah. I can... I'll find a reason to get her out. Where are we drink? Uh, where should I bring her to? Well, let's maybe get into the VIP area first, because mm. I suspect she would already be back there. Yes. And then maybe we can figure a way to get her out to somewhere quiet, or if you can get into whatever her preparation room is. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Black powder, without hesitation, head held up high, very uh, deliberate steps. We'll literally just walk towards the VIP room. Lovely. Okay. Okay, and you're going with Tori? Um, I figure at this point, pretty much all of us were still together. Yeah. Oh, so you and the whole group is going up to the VIP I section. believe that was the original plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you will lead the group the forward. It's a relatively large group, but... As soon as you get uh, within speaking distance, one of the guards will say, Passes, please. I don't say a thing, I just hold out the pass. So he's going to go ahead and, and push the pass, uh, uh, scan the passes. And um, uh, they're going to type a little bit onto the panel. And then you're going to hear a eh, eh, like buzzing noise. And he's going to say, Where'd you get these passes from? Uh... I'm gonna just kind of glance back at Henry for a minute. Uh, he'll, he'll say, and he changes his voice for this. What do you mean they're not working? We're saying our system isn't recognizing these VIP passes as valid passes. I see. Well, I think I'm gonna have to make some calls. And he'll leave them away for a minute. Seeming very, okay. like, offended, almost, at the situation. He's definitely putting on that okay. act of, ugh, I can't. Roll He's up. being a Karen. <laughs> roll up. Okay, roll a presence roll. Presence. I have acting. Sure, do that. I also get plus two from my voice. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm going to use my luck. Nice. Okay. Just to be safe. Nice. <laughs> so, nice. So you you basically have the hand the situation in such a way that they're not suspicious of you. Like they, they think that this was some sort of misunderstanding or malfunction, but they can't technically let you in despite that. So yeah, you said I'm gonna go make a few calls. So you're gonna go leave the group. Yeah, I'm gonna take the group with me. Like not clog the hallway basically while we make some calls. Right. I think the first thing that Henry's gonna say is gonna say, they must have up upgraded security. That should have worked, but sounds like we're gonna have to try something else. Okay. So what else can we do? Um, can you hack it from here or or you're kind of stuck? I can hack it from here. But again, since they upgraded security, it might be a little bit trickier to not get caught. Uh, Agatha is also looking around and uh, she notices a panel. She points out a panel and says, Looks like we've got some air ducts up there. Might be a little old fashioned, but I'm sure the air ducts should probably go into most of the building, at least into the VIP section if need be. The question is, we'd have to like form some sort of distraction so that nobody can tell whether or not um, nobody can tell that you're going in through the air ducts. Also, um, that one over there seems to not be in the, the immediate view of a camera, but still a distraction is going to have to be necessary. 
I can provide a distraction, maybe. So can I. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what do you suggest, Frankie? Or, no, <clears throat> what do you suggest, Guy? I was going to create a little bit of a storm around the poker tables or the blackjack tables and have the cards all go flying around. I like just your make plan. It, make it all just nothing but card storm chaos. Not as Dude. fun as laying on fire, but <laughs> don't act. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Roll your telekinesis. All right. Yes. So it's just, it's, and he's like pulling the cards out of the little dispensers as well. So it's just they're like flying out, like and like just going all over the place. Cool. And when all the cards are flying around, I'm gonna say Veed is very like specifically enamored by this because Veed loves cards, and um, <laughs> so so Veed's a little distracted as well by the distraction. <laughs> um, so a lot of the other dealers are like scrambling to like get order back because and several of the guests are like, oh, like the cards and. Um, a lot of eyes are looking at what's going on in that immediate area and not at the air ducts. Right. So now what's happening while well, this is happening? I definitely want to have Sam try to scramble in. Okay. Yeah. So Sam, um, you're going to go over to, to the air ducts. Um, they probably are screw, screw. There's probably screws on them. So what, what, what do you do? So with my streetwise, am I able to like get a good gauge on how quickly I can get the panel unscrewed and opened to get in? Yeah, go ahead and roll your streetwise right now. If possible, I want to get the panel off. Eight out of fifteen. Okay. You believe? So we're gonna say that you were pre-planning all this. So you believe that? It's going to take you enough time to at least remove the panel while this distraction is happening, but you probably will require somebody else to make another distraction in order to not catch you going into the in through the air duct and possibly put the panel behind you, like cover up the panel behind you. You'll need to, somebody else to do a second distraction okay. of some sort. Do you want me to do that or star? Start. I would say, let's see, because yes. what I could do, I could do, well, I'll, if I did Starburst, it would be more like a firework show, like, because, you know, Star would make a lot of noise, but since they're already distracted, I would say maybe it would be better for Tori to do it, maybe set the cards on fire, and that would be even more of a, was, more yeah. like a panic distraction. Yeah, that was kind of my idea, was to ignite fire on yeah ignite the tards on fire so. teamwork right <laughs> so i will try to do that <laughs> all right go ahead and roll your magic roll um six so it definitely passes so she'll nice very discreetly <laughs> <laughs> make the cards catch on fire in order to be discreet about that, I would like for you to roll a stealth. Ooh. Nice. Oh my god. Right. <laughs> nice. So you will very discreetly um, cause the, the cards to go up in flames, which does allow um, Sam enough time to unscrew the panel really quickly and like crawl into the air ducts. Um, now, while all of this confusion is happening, the guards, uh, I'm gonna say everybody else who's not Sam, roll a hearing, perception hearing. Okay. 